Did you know that on your Windows computer, you can create your own custom file extension? And I mean like a .pdf or a .zip or .jpeg. You can literally make a .anything you want. And it's super easy. All it takes is one change to the Windows registry. If you aren't familiar, the Windows registry is the big configuration database for your whole operating system. It stores different settings and really how things work on your Windows computer. So we can create a special file that will make certain changes to the registry, and that will allow us to create our own custom file extension. Let's open up a text editor like Notepad and save a file on our desktop called anything you want dot reg. The dot reg extension means that the file will be read and understood by the Windows registry. And to make sure that it's saved with the dot reg extension, we'll need to select all files as our save file type. And now we can add the contents. Windows registry editor version 5.00 and then inside square braces, hkey underscore current underscore user backslash software slash classes slash dot john. And then a new line, the at symbol, equals, and then within double quotes, exe file. So the very top of the file, Windows registry version 5.00, is a header that helps indicate this is in fact a .reg file. So our computer knows what to do with it. Then in the square braces, we specify the registry hive and the key. A registry hive is a lot like a bookmark and like a chapter in a book. And then all of the keys could be different pages and the values in a key are all the words in that book. It's a silly analogy, but hey, thankfully the H key current user hive is one that we have right access to. We can write our own chapter in the book. We are allowed to make changes to it because it is after all the current user. So we specify that a .john file will actually be interpreted like an .exe file. And remember, you can make this custom file extension to anything you want. You can make your name, I don't know, .brian or .alexandra, or you can make it .firefox or .google chrome, anything. And this is literally all that we have to do. Next, I'm gonna take any executable, just like a regular program, and I'll change it to have my new custom file extension. I'll just use the simple Windows calculator and I'll put it on my desktop. You do need to have the show file extensions option on within Windows Explorer, but now I can just change this to a .john file rather than a .exe file. Obviously, clicking on it right now, our computer really doesn't know what to do with it, but if I click on the .reg file first and then have all of these changes staged within the Windows Windows registry, now it understands and knows what to do with the .john file. This would all need to be done ahead of time anyway, so I'll click through these here, and now if I double click on my .john file, it'll open up the calculator. Isn't that neat? But I know what you're thinking. That's kind of dumb, right? Like, hey, you have to click through all those windows and those dialog boxes to make sure those changes are in place. And those are some pretty sketchy looking pop-ups. Well, you're right, and I agree with you. So we can stage this into one small, simple command, and then we can prepare that as a Windows shortcut file. That way, all it takes is one click, just clicking on the icon, and it'll be a little bit more quiet, right? Before we do that though, let's open up the Windows registry editor and let's see what those changes actually look like. I'll use the reg edit program from the Windows Run dialog box, and then I'll navigate to the H key current user hive and the key that we specified. Remember we made an at symbol variable and that value inside our dot reg file? We set that equal to exe file. That is actually the default value in the Windows registry for a specific key. Now, if we want to revert our changes, we can just simply delete this key. Now, let's stage this as one small and simple command. Let me open up the Windows command prompt and I'll enter reg add hkcu slash software slash classes slash dot john. And now another argument forward slash ve space forward slash d open quotes exe file out of quotes, space, slash, F. So we're adding a new registry key with the slash VE flag to specify the default value. We're using slash D to denote the value itself and then slash F to force the changes. If we go ahead and hit enter, we see the operation completed successfully. It worked. Now, if we look back in the Windows registry, we see that all the changes are back. This did the same exact thing as the .reg file, but it was all one simple, single, portable line of code. 
If we double click our .john file again, we open up the calculator. But bear in mind, that can be any executable. What's to stop us from making that a malicious program, malicious software, or malware? We could, if we really wanted to, stage malware with this technique. Say we're a penetration tester or an ethical hacker, this tiny bit of indirection might throw off a human analyst who doesn't know any better. Maybe it would help in social engineering, trying to trick the person to run our malware. And by the way, this small trick is one of the modules covered in Maldev Academy. And if you haven't heard of them before, they're super duper cool. I'd love to tell you a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, Maldev Academy. Brought to you by the renowned security researchers, Mr. Docs and Null, join a comprehensive and module-based malware development course that provides fundamental to advanced level training. Write your own implants, beacons, and malware with modern 64-bit architecture perfect for offensive security specialists, or even beginners with no prior experience in malware development. With over 100 text-based modules, all with downloadable files and code, and a vibrant Discord community, you learn so much. Between process injection, compile time API hashing, anti-debugging techniques, sandbox detection, and so, so much more, you're provided a virtual machine that includes all the pre-built tools and code ready for you. And of course, upon completion, you get that fancy certificate that proves all the awesome stuff that you've learned. With Maldev Academy, you can choose any plan for access to the material, or jump into lifetime access and get all the new updates. Both Mr. Docs and Null are always sharing new research, between lulbins or other tradecraft, and with Maldev Academy, you can truly become a professional malware developer. Dive into the Academy with my link below in the video description, jh.live slash maldevacademy. For a limited time, you can use my code HAMMOND10 for 10% off. Huge thanks to Maldev Academy for sponsoring this video. Now, I mentioned Maldev Academy does cover this trick, and they even have another, kind of a similar module, in creating your own protocol handler. But for this trick specifically, creating your own file extension, we might be able to poke and play and kind of take this a couple steps further. We've already made this more flexible by using a simple reg add command, which we could obfuscate or even make more stealthy if we wanted to, but we could actually get this code to run with a single click. If we staged this as a window shortcut, we could hide the execution and even decorate it with a pretty name or an icon. So I will right click on my desktop and I'll select new create shortcut. I'll make the target of the shortcut our exact same reg add command as before. We can test that it works by clearing our registry setting, double clicking on our shortcut and refreshing the registry editor. Our change is made and our .john file executes just as we would like. Now we can make it pretty. We'll decorate our shortcut, make it try to blend in or masquerade as something else. Like we'll change the name to Firefox, change the icon, and we can even have it run minimized so there's no pop-up that displays on the screen. Now, wouldn't it be nice if our shortcut auto started our executable? So it's all just one click for our victim. That is doable, but it will take some tricks. We're still relying on having a second file, the actual program that we want to start or our payload. But if we want to invoke it through our shortcut file, we need to know where it is on the file system. That's kind of a problem because these two could easily be decoupled and Windows shortcut files don't have any real way to know where they are. We could just basically hard code the path and the file system location, but that's a little bit fragile. We can just tell the shortcut file, oh, it's in the desktop, and then we could use cmd slash c at the start of our command so we get access to some of the other important variables. And at the end of our reg add command, we can add these two ampersands, or the double ands, to say, we're gonna start a new command. We'll use the command start to run a new program, and then the letters cd wrapped in two percent signs. That indicates the current directory variable. From there, we can just reference our file in the current directory, slash calc.john. And now, if we double click on our shortcut, it'll do both. It'll automatically stage the registry changes to run .john files, and then it will just auto start our .john program. And by the way, this doesn't have to be just a new file extension. If you wanted to change the behavior or functionality of any other kind of file and how the computer will interpret it and then try to run it, you can just as easily change things for a .png file or a .txt file or anything. 
There is one caveat though. If you aren't making a new custom file extension, but you're trying to replace or change a pre-existing file extension like .zip, some other registry settings could get in the way and conflict with it. In fact, there is another registry key that controls some of the settings for how these different files are handled. Check this out as an example. HKey current user, software, Microsoft Windows, current version explorer, file extensions, and then .zip in this case. If you really wanted to clobber a pre-existing file extension, you might need to remove that key within the registry first. It is still in HKey current user, so we still have right access and can make that change, but we do that to make sure that our own settings take effect. That's something to be wary of, but seriously, if you want to, you could completely change how any other file is handled on your computer. You could make a .txt file or a .png file just act like an executable program. You could literally make a picture get you a reverse shell. And if you look through all the registry keys for these different file types, you'll notice this phrase or a word that keeps reappearing, prog IDs. Those prog IDs are the specific identifiers that map what program will work with whatever kind of file. It's how your computer knows how to handle that file and then automatically open it. So the question is, could we make our .john file extension or whatever we choose run something other than an exe or an executable file? Well, yes, obviously we could. We just need to know the correct prog ID. We used the exe file prog ID when we were just staging our registry commands, but what else can we use? Well, thankfully, I found this resource online that tells you how you can list out all of the possible prog IDs. So let's run this within PowerShell, dir, registry, hkey classes root, yada, yada, yada. And this will spit out a lot of stuff, but now we can find what looks familiar and we can experiment and try different files with different prog IDs. And with all that, you have the whole playground. You can create any file extension you want and see what you can map it to within Windows for another program to interpret or handle it appropriately. That's pretty cool. Now, putting our hacker hat back on and thinking about this for malware, we did streamline the stager a bit. We got it to silently make the registry changes and then auto start our program with the Windows shortcut, but it's still sort of separated. Our actual payload, the secondary file, still relies on the shortcut being ran ahead of time. And the shortcut might not even know the actual relocation of the other file. Unless you bundle these together, maybe hide the second file in like a subdirectory, or I don't know, make a hidden file in an ISO or zip file format, however you deliver it. But even then, it's not perfect because you still have multiple files. It would be so cool if this could all work with just one click and one file. And the Windows shortcut is ideal because it's trusted, you have readily available code execution, and you can even change the icon or decorate it and make it blend in. We could make that a social engineering pretense, and we don't need to deal with, oh, a signed compiled binary and any of that stuff. I would love to be able to use that shortcut file to do more, but if you're trying to add commands to the target of that shortcut file, you run it into a character limit. You can only put so much stuff inside of the target of a shortcut. So I know that's a tangent, but I'm kind of scratching my head wondering, is there a way that we could bypass the character limit and restrictions on an LNK file and still have a shortcut run whatever we want? Now, let me tell you, that is possible. We can do it. We can get a shortcut file to run anything we want without the character limit, and it's all just one simple click for the victim. But that is a completely different trick, and it's not related to making your own custom file extension on Windows. It is a whole other trick on its own, and we'll have to save that for another video. So hey, if you'd like to catch that in another video, please do subscribe so you don't miss it. Leave me a comment, let me know that you want to see it, and do all those YouTube algorithm things. And hey, while you're waiting, take a look at Maldev Academy. Link in the video description. They have incredible education, so much cool stuff to learn. And thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.